edition. We could not wait until Monday to actually talk about uh, the wild sweeping weekend series Friday, Saturday at the X from the Sharks. It's Zolgad and Declan Goff, as always. And uh, Declan, I want to start you with this one. Okay. Um, this was a so so this guy didn't necessarily have a great game. In fact, he allowed a very bad goal to Brent Burns early in the game. But I think one of my biggest questions going into the Saturday night tilt between the Sharks and the, the Wild was that Kapokokkanen was going to get his first start since the nine goal debacle in St. Louis. Mm-hmm. And furthermore, it was only going to be his fourth start in the past 16 games, which I fundamentally disagree with. I think he should be playing more than that. I agree. Because he's going to be he's going to be needed, if nothing else, to get Talbot a rest at times. But that being said, he allowed an awful goal to Burns. Um, he basically just fanned it was a shot for the point and mm-hmm. Ka- and Capo basically fanned with his glove and trying to make the save and it, it beat him clean there was no screen there was no nothing um according to uh, according to what transpired on the bench dean said that Capo came to the bench and essentially said to them that's my one bad goal that's it and you know what he allowed one more goal it was late in the game by that point it was 5 to 1 mm-hmm. uh I think that that start is just incredibly important because Kapo Kakinen, I counted this up last night. Okay. The, wi- the Wild has, I want to say, it's seven games left in the month of April, which is a lot, and six games between uh, May 1st and the end of the regular season on May 12th. So you are going to need this guy to play and get you some points, preferably. Uh, so Kapo coming off the nine-goal game in St. Louis – Starting out by struggling and allowing a really bad goal against the Sharks and then settling down to me is a huge storyline in the big picture of things. Two things. I think, number one, I love that he has the self-realization that says, yeah, I allowed a bad goal because past goaltenders here would not even admit to that flaw. (laughs) I'll just leave it at that. Uh, but I also think Capo having the realization of that and, and then going back out there and standing on his head and keeping his team in the game was big. Number two, so if there's, you said seven games in the rest of the month of April and then a six game, also additional little sprint in May. So that's so they have 13 games left, correct? Is that is that mm-hmm. where we're at right now? So right. if there's 13 games left, I think you have to, I mean, ideally you would like seven, six split between Talbot Capo. I think anything less than five would be a crime. You know, like I, I think at this point, if you're going to play 13 more games, obviously, and and hey, there's a COVID situation again going through the NHL and with the MLB. But let, let, if 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 you have 13 games left, I think Capo Cochran has to start at least five of those games just to keep the just to keep him fresh, to keep Talbot fresh. Um, and I know they play what they play St. Louis still a healthy amount. Uh, they have a, they have a couple more tilts against Vegas, so there will be some bigger games on the schedule. But I think if if you're going out this next this last 13 games, Capo Cockett has to be in there at least five times, more ideally six. Yeah, and I mean he might. You know what? With with the way that this year has gone and the complete sprint that that this is going to be, especially uh, not just in season decks, but once you get in the playoffs. You know, the reality is this too. You might need him at a very important time. And and he played well enough in goal o- over a very extended period because uh, keep in mind, he went nine games at one point mm-hmm. without a loss. Um, so Kabo Kakinen has proven to me that he can be effective in goal. He can be good. This does not mean that Cam Talbot is not your most important goalie. I get that. He is. But all of that being said, I'm with you. In in this is not to me. This is not the old days of Doomnick's your one, and oh my <laughs> god, if Staylock has to play, what do we do? Right, <laughs> right, it's, right, it's a disaster. That's terrible. This is very much. I I still think this should be a one A and one B. Sure, where Kapo Kakadin has the ability to step in. He has the ability to play, and if he has to take a key game. That does not mean, and there was a time where I couldn't have said this about this franchise. Yep. That does not mean that the technically the backup goaltender taking a key game mm-hmm. means all hope is gone. That that page should be turned, and that's why I, I think it's incredibly important when Capo starts that we see what he can do, as opposed to okay, that starts gone. Now it's back to Cam Talbot for the next five games. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think it's clear Cam Talbot's your one, and and that's okay. Um, I, I like your analogy that is 1A, 1B. That's what we were we were going back and forth on that, who is 1A, you know, at the beginning of the season uh, when Capo stepped in after Talbot was hurt and we had the COVID situation, and he looked like a 1A. Uh, but in general, the Wild signed Talbot to be their 1, and Talbot has lived up to his expectations, and he deserves to be the number 1 guy, and he will start Game 1 of a playoff series. That's a foregone conclusion at this point. But Capo is, yeah, not a liability. He's not Alex Stalock. It's not young Darcy Kemper. It's not... Um, you know, pick any other flipping goalie the Wild have tried to run out there before they found yeah. dude Nick Brizgalov, even for that matter. Oh my God! Oh no, he has to start. You're yeah, seriously. Your, your dad. It's, it's over. It's honestly remarkable the Wild made it as far as they did to six games in a semifinal series with Brizgalov and Darcy Kemper in net. It is on um, when you look at it that way. It's kind of remarkable that they were able to go that far. But I, I think if Capo can step in and play and and also trust get the trust in the coaching staff that he can be out there because I that's, that's the thing. I think Dean has done a very good job and also. I know a lot of us, uh, you know, our, our friend Lou Nanny likes to say players play, coaches coach, managers manage, but I think Bill Guerin also has a say in this, and I think it's foolish not to just assume that he is completely hands-off. I think he lets Dean make the, the decisions for sure. That's not what I'm implying, but Guerin's in on this as well. Guerin knows what it takes to win. He's a former player. He's a former very decorated player. He knows what it takes to win, and I think he also is aware that they need to get Capo Cockett in some time in there to make things easier on Talbot and the rest of the team going forward into the playoffs. All right, the fourth line. And Dean keeps trying to tell us, you guys call it the fourth line. It's not the fourth. Okay, Every coach, I love it. I love When you look at minutes played, Zach Parisi is playing the, on the fourth line, okay? <laughs> if he's not, then his, his uh, um, ice time should increase substantially, which, by the way, I'm not advocating for that, but it is the fourth line. The amazing thing about the fourth line is this, Declan Goff, and I don't expect this to keep up, but it's a great storyline for now. Every game, there's like a new story, a new guy from the fourth line, right? Yeah. Um, it, it was it was Zach who continues to, to play great. I believe the stat mm -hmm. now is four goals in the past five games. When he like went twelve games without a goal, he couldn't buy a goal. Zach Parisi is playing lights out. They have found the perfect role for Zach. Um, Benino, who I'd like to get in, into at some point down the road because that sure. guy is a winner yep. that guy is a he he is a winner um but the game last night and you know what we've talked about this too i i don't mean to pat ourselves on the back but we've talked about this guy uh nico stir last night okay so he had been a wing he had been benched at times he hadn't been playing i've heard conflicting things about they don't want him to get a big head i don't know what but anyway i I think we have both looked at Sturm and said, yeah, but what about the speed? So he, he got moved to center probably about a week ago or so. Um, he played great. In, in fact, he, he got moved there during the debacle in St. Louis, and he played well, and the team was not playing well. And last night, he continues uh, being the pivot with Benino and Parisi on his wings, Declan Goff, to look absolutely outstanding. He scored a goal last night that I would argue the only other guys on this team that, that could score the end-to-end the -end wraparound type uh, goal that he scored would be Kaprizov for sure could score that goal. Right. Um, on his best day, maybe Fiala. Be beyond that, I don't think that there is a guy with the speed and skill. Uh, Sturm's game last night was phenomenal. And while Parisi is at the end here, like I think they found the perfect role for yeah. Zach at this point in Zach's life. Uh, Benino, I think, would play – you could tell him to play on any given line, and he's going to give his best, and this just happens to be a perfect fit. Sturm is ascending right now, though. I mean, this is not going to be where he, he ends, but I am just glad that we are finally getting a glimpse of the skill this kid can bring and that speed, and oh my God, is that fun to watch. Yeah, I think he deserves a bigger role. I mean, just looking at last night, he played 14 minutes, uh, where compared to the last three games, he's had a minutes increase. He's gone from 12 minutes to 13 minutes to 14 minutes. He's winning face-offs. Um, he has speed that this team desperately needs. He's playing well at center. He won 50% of his draws yesterday in the circle. Um, it, I understand not wanting to mess with the line if it, it's, it's working really well for Zach and Benino playing, is playing well as well, like you said. But if you're not, if you're going to continue to do this Victor Rask thing, 
Like, wh- why not at least, if, if you're going to juggle up the lines, just put Nico Sturm out there in the middle in, in a high leverage situation when you need a goal and you need speed. Because you, th- this, if this team plays Colorado in a playoff series, and it looks like it only probably happen if you get got to a second round at this point, but if it does happen, y- you need speed to match up with them. And Nico Sturm provides that. And I, I would love to see him get more time. And the fact that he is is using his speed on display and he's getting rewarded with more minutes, I think that that's getting trust in the coaching staff that, yeah, he's not just a taxi squad player. Uh, he's not just a ceiling fourth line player. He deserves bigger minutes. And I'm curious to see if he can figure out, if they can figure out a way to put him in other situations where he, and look, yeah, with, with Parisi and Benito, they're playing well right now. I get it. You know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But eventually, if you need to get Fiala going, which I know we'll get into, if you need to spark Kaprizov, put the put the best player in the middle that fits their skill sets, and that's Sturm. Sturm has the speed to do that. Absolutely, yeah. And and I don't know, I don't know what the problem is there. And I'm look, I am sure he is not near being a complete player yet. I completely get that. All right, that's fine. But. When you watch that skill last night and you watch what he brings, and I mean, he is skating. He is skating with Parisi and Benino. God bless them. But they ain't exactly fast, okay? So to what you're saying, what would it be like if if you gave um, Kaprizov Sturm for a couple of shifts? I right. don't know. I yeah. don't know. I do know this. And I know the power play has improved, okay? I totally get that. I yeah, do know better. this. And Victor Rask had a, well, he had a pretty good game last night. I thought he was playing extremely well until he had a, until he turned over the puck in his own zone with a stupid pass up the slot that damn near cost him. But anyway, I would, I would still be curious to see if you replaced Rask with Sturm on that power play. Yeah. I'd be really curious to see that because I do think the skill set, look, Rask is a veteran player. And I know you, you probably trust him more, but my God, the talent I don't think is close here. Like I don't think, like I don't think we're we're splitting hairs on talent here. I think it's it's Sturm, and then down the rung, bang, 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 bang. It's Rask. Okay. <laughs> right. So anyway, I'm with you completely on that. I do think that 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 would be fun to at least experiment with. And and yeah, if you get Colorado in the playoffs, you have to figure. That the that the attempted matchup line wise is going to be Eck against McKinnon, right? Like you've got to get the Eck line. Yes, and I know that they can bring some spark, but they also probably are going to give give you. I mean, that line of what Rantanen, Landeskog, McKinnon is incredible. So if you get the Eck line against that line, I'm not saying that they're going to shut them down, but I don't think that you have a line that comes close to having the potential right. uh, to be as successful. So here's my question. Okay fourth line then do you want so i mean this is this is potentially the abs they are high end they are motor 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 yep do you want Sturm with those two guys on the fourth line when i think what you're saying and i think i agree completely is he's a guy that can match up he he can combat what the avalanche can do pretty well and you don't really have a lot of guys that can do that 100%. 100%. That is exactly what, yeah. I, Victor Rass last 15 games, just pulled this up on his game log. So he's playing 15 minutes a night, so he's getting top six minutes at this point. Yeah. He only has four points. Three of them have come on the power play, so he's yep. basically just been a power play pony. 15 shots, doesn't shoot a lot. I mean, negative four on the ice. If You cannot continue to play a player in that amount of role with that amount of time and have that amount of production. It just it, it, it doesn't work anymore. Right. And so, what's funny is this, Rask's, Rask's skill set and his skating ability fits perfectly with what Parisi and Benino do. Yes. Like, like the, that's fine. That's a sundial line. I got right. no problem with that. Sun, yeah. You know what? An, an old man line. They can be timed with a sundial. That's cool. But yeah, like if, if you play the abs, I really think you got to look at okay, what what would actually what can we do against the abs that's going to come back at them with what they do well, and for Sturm to just be sort of left on, well, it's the fourth line, it's fine. Uh, I yeah, I don't really like that. Yeah, no, I, I think at that point 
And yeah, like I said, Victor Rass, three of the four points have come on the power play, and they've all been power play assists. So he's really not, it's not like he's scoring power play goals even. He has he has no goals in his last four, 15 games, and you're trotting him out there as basically your if de facto number one center. And that just, th- that kind of production can't happen. And especially when we're getting into it, but like if Kevin Fiala is turning pucks over and not producing, he gets benched. Like th- th- there's a there's a cause for concern. If you're going to play like this, we're going to hold you accountable. Do the same thing with Victor Rask and reward Nico, Nico Sturm. That, that's all. This is this is the Nico Sturm podca- appreciation podcast no, I mean, right here. He, he brings something. He brings yeah. something and we knew it. We knew he had speed. We knew he had. I understand they want to cultivate him. I think they, they see Rask as a lost cause. Like they're just going to play him because he's Victor Rask and he'll be, I hope, gone. But they see Sturm as, hey, we, we've got to cultivate him and we've got to bring him along and show him the ropes. And I understand all of that. But at some point in time here, and look, if you – Sit me down and say, Judd, you know what? We're not going to make a playoff run. You're crazy. Like, we might win a round. I don't know. I'd say, okay, I guess. But like, if you're <laughs> serious, but if you're serious about trying to have, if, if you have any hope of getting out of the West, which is going to be extremely tough, but if you have a hope there, I think Sturm has to be, has to be looked at as a key there. Uh, Kevin Fiala. Okay, so this is the weird thing. You, you broached this a bit, Declan, and you're right. Kevin Viala, second period last night. And my contention is that this was a two, this was really a five period um, achievement award of sorts. <laughs> he had a lousy game on Friday. He, yep. I, I don't, he just sort of, I don't want to say he doesn't try hard because there, there are lots of games that I see him doing things that I like. But on Friday, he didn't play well. Saturday, second period, awful pass in his own zone, picked off. Dino says, that's it, and went and told him, for the final 11 minutes of this period, you are benched. Now, you brought this up, and you're right. Victor Rask did the exact same thing. Oh, I think his pass was as or more egregious than Kevin's, and I don't think he paid the piper for that, but um, they benched Fiala to end the second period for quite some time. They were on a, I want to say they were up two men on the power play to start the third period decks. Fiala was out there, so he was immediately brought back. Uh, But the point being is, I think that Dean takes personal responsibility for Fiala based on their history together and like what he deems can be to get the most from him. But I don't wonder if you're right. Does it have the same effect when he gets benched and Victor Rask sort of just, you know, hey, I turned it over too. And they're like, yeah, you're, but you're Rask. I, I wonder if they should be, and this is tough, but I wonder if they should be trying to apply at least the same principles because to me it sends, it sends a mixed message of sorts when one guy gets benched and the other guy doesn't get benched. And we know the second guy is just not that good, which is probably why they didn't do it. Yeah, I, I just wish I, I understand why Kevin Fiala was benched, and he'll do this. He'll he'll have offensive turnovers that might make you want to pull your hair out, but he rewards you with his phenomenal play uh, when he is on. Because when he is on, when when he when he's feeling himself, he is a very damn good hockey player. Um, we saw it right before the hat trick. What seven games he had. 13 points, including yeah, the hat trick in, in one night, and, and he was scoring goals, and he was being productive, he was shooting the puck, um, but he's going to have games like this that, that make you question it. I still say it's worth the lumps. Like Some people get so up in arms, and, and yes, he deserved to be held accountable yesterday. That, that's not necessarily what I'm applying, but also just don't expect and don't get like so down the dumps over like, God, why does he do this? Why? Well, it just it kind of is who he is at this point. He, like he's a, he's a damn talented player. And then when he's, when he's on, you realize like, holy crap, this dude can actually be a, a humongous difference maker for this team to the point of accountability. Then with Victor Rask, then yes, hold Victor Rask accountable. Are, are we just not because he's a center? Like, and, and the team is so you know thin there. I, I don't really understand the logic behind it because if, if Fiala is going to be doing this and then Rask is doing the same stuff, but Rask still gets out there 16 minutes a night and doesn't produce anything like, you know, Kevin Fiala can be a streaky player to a degree, right? Like he might go four or five games without a point, but oh, yeah. in general, he also will give you a five games in a row with 10 points. Like he will do that. So you know what the ceiling is. You know exactly what you're going to get with Fiala. Yes, you know what you're getting with Rask, but the ceiling, my God, I mean, it's a, it's a not even a rambler home. It's a step up from one step down. Like there isn't a bunch of there isn't a there isn't much of a ceiling to that floor. So I, if, if Dino's going to hold Fiala accountable, 
I would hope that Rask gets held accountable, and then to our point from earlier, then you elevate Nico Sturm, who deserves a promotion. That's what hockey's all about, right? Accountability and, and getting rewarded for your hard play. And, like, I sometimes always mock that, and I, I, it, it, it kind of upsets me sometimes. But at this point, like, that argument applies here. Like, you, you have to hold these guys accountable, and you have to reward the players who are helping you out. Yeah, and it, now the thing about Kevin that I think is important to keep in, in mind, too, is I think he's got a lot of skill and he could definitely go on streaks where he, he scores. Um, but he is not going to be Kaprizov who is outstanding. Yeah. And Kaprizov made that Kaprizov call last night. My God, he made another play. So, so he basically outdueled the Sharks defenseman near the blue line to save the puck, which is a great play. Like if that was the only contribution towards his goal, that's fine. He got the puck to Zuccarello, who I swear to God was passing the puck to Fiala, who <laughs> fanned the shot, and the shot made its way, or I'm sorry, the pass made its way to Kaprizov then, who shot, and Martin Jones had no chance. <laughs> um, but, I mean, these are the type of goals. Again, this is the type of goal, and it, it looked fluky, and I have no idea what was planned and what was not. The whole thing to me seemed to be a broken play because I really think the pass was for Fiala. But all of that being said, this is another goal the Wild simply didn't score mm -hmm. before. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like Kaprizov made the entire play. Right. He made the entire play. I mean, this kid is strong in the puck. He battles guys. He wins those. Like he doesn't try and lose. He wins them, Dex. Like when you see the when you see what Kaprizov can do overall, it is so far and above. And this is why the Gabrick uh, discussion has to end because Marion Gabrick on his best day wouldn't and couldn't do that. Like he didn't make those plays. Like no. when you when you see what Kaprizov combines, he combines skill and he combines talent. To, to essentially set himself up. That's incredible. It is. I mean, it's great to watch, but it's incredible. Yeah, yeah I mean, that, 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 that is the difference. Like, Fiala is not on the same level as Kaprizov, and that's fine. That's why he's the Robin. That's why I make that analogy. He's he's secondary in this. He's a secondary character in this story. Um, but what Kaprizov does, and, and, you know, with guys like Sturm playing very well right now, and we have a goalie debate, where we kind of sometimes forget about Kapro Kuro Kaprizov. You know, when you watch him, you don't forget about it. You're like, oh, my God, I'm so glad this guy plays for your team. But the storyline-wise and, and talking points, we kind of sometimes, at least recently, have been forgetting that, oh, yeah, we have Kuro Kaprizov on this team, and he's already shattering all the rookie records, and it's been a 56-game season. He's only played 45 of the games. Because you know why? Because he does, so, so he does two things. One is, and we talk about him a ton on the podcast when he, he makes his great plays, of course. his great goals, right? Yep. But you know what we don't do? We don't focus on the cra the, the, the garbage work, and I, I mean that as a compliment, that he does. Like when he takes pucks away, he goes into corners. He does things that grinders do. And like, that's not sexy, but he does those things. He literally made that goal that he scored last night he started the entire thing <laughs> with with what was a with what could be perceived as a throwaway play. But I mean, he takes it to a veteran defenseman, out battles him, gets Zuccarello the puck. Like those are the things that we don't talk about that we should because mm -hmm. there's a lot of star talent players who don't do that stuff. They nope. just don't. They can't. They're not nope. strong enough. And our this franchise has lacked that type of player for its entire history. Gabrick was not... Kirill Kaprizov, I could say already, is, is a better, more skilled player oh, than Marion Gabrick. It's not even close, in my opinion. Well, and Gabrick would never work that hard. No. Not on his best... I mean, that's no. the thing, is he was looking to score goals, which is great. Yeah. That's fine. Uh, Gabrick was somewhere between... I, I think now, in retrospect, Marion Gabrick is somewhere between Kaprizov and Fiala. Yeah. Like, I think he's a better Fiala... Yep. But he wanted to do more what Fiala does. Yes. 100%. Like, Fiala would really like to score 50 goals. Yep. Kaprizov probably will. But, I mean, he'll also do 8,000 other things hmm. that guys like Fiala and Gabrick can't do. So, I, I would say that Gabrick's a better player than Kevin is. But he's in between there because he's certainly not as good a player as Kirill is. Yeah, I think that's fair. Last thing. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. This is incredible. I saw history at the X last night, my, my man. Okay. Pat Patrick oh, yeah. Marlowe ties mm -hmm. Gordy Howe's record of 1,767 NHL regular season games played. He's 41, and here's the incredible stat. The top two draft picks of the 97 draft, so so you were five? 
Yes. In 97? Yep. Okay. The top two Four draft five. The top two draft picks the year that you were five <laughs> were Jumbo Joe Thornton by Boston, <laughs> who's still playing for Toronto, yep. and and Marlo by San Jose, who uh, Patrick went to Toronto a, a couple of years ago, went back to the Sharks, got traded to the Penguins at the deadline last year. That didn't work, and now he's back for a third time with the Sharks. But think about that for a second. 1,767 games played. He tied Gordy Bleeping Howe. <laughs> Gordy Howe, who's like Babe Ruth. Like, you've right. heard of Gordy Howe. Yeah. Um, an incredible. I mean, that that in in itself is really cool. And, and uh, according to Dean, Ryan Suter was the guy who told his teammates, when the game is done, everyone go shake this guy's hand, which was a really, really cool thing. Because when you think about that, like those yep. are those are the records that are incredible. Yeah, it is. Mar- Marlowe's a beaut, man. I love Patrick Marlowe. Um, he was he was he's been a phenomenal player for the Sharks. He probably is San Jose Sharks if you really want to circle someone and 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 make their franchise player. And they've had a lot of good teams and a lot of good players throughout the years. Um, but what Marlowe's been able to do in his career, and he's still productive. Like I think that's even the scary. I mean, he's not 41. the player he once was, yeah. but 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 he is still productive. Um. I don't know how much longer he'll go, but that is a record that is pretty damn impossible to break. Like I don't, I don't, and I'm twenty, I'm twenty eight. I'm guessing no one's going to break that record again in my lifetime. I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I don't think someone is. I really don't think someone is will break that game record. I don't know, like not good, Zach Greasy, not Zach, certainly not Zach. Oh my God, no. Hey, you know no. what? Don't laugh, Zach Greasy, right now playing at a level where there's a possibility. You could shop him this summer. Ooh, I like where you're going. I like where you're going. We could talk about that on a later edition of Judd's Hockey Show. Pass shoot score.